with the Fuel Homestead. Um, I promised you a meat rabbit video this week. So, through the cold and the rain, I'm going to try to accomplish that. Um, right here, we have Luke. He's on the other side. You can't see him yet, but he'll come back and forth throughout the video. And I'll tell you more about Luke in a little while. Um, I want you to meet some of our rabbits, some of the breeds that we have. We are downsizing this year, but um, we are keeping some of them for our own use and to sell as show rabbits. Now, uh, you might be wondering why show rabbits, and it's because um, we breed Rex rabbits, and so when we first got into this, we, um, we found that we made more money and more profit by selling them as show rabbits or show potential since we don't quite know you hear my duckies over there. <laughs> Since we don't quite know uh, what their fur is going to come out to until they get older. But, um, you know, we were able to sell rabbits for $75 to $85 each. Whereas my meat rabbits, I can only sell $25 to $30 each. So this is one of our hutches. We have ground hutches, but not on the ground. So they're not pastured. Um, we do give them grass clippings when the grass is really high. We let our backyard grow up in the summertime, and so we hand pick grass uh, to give to them. We do a lot of raw food, which I'll get into all this, um, but I'm going to open this up, and maybe Luke might come out. You can see him in there. He's not quite sure what to think because I don't typically make videos out here unless it's for the chickens. So. Luke is our sweet little Rex boy, and um, let's go ahead and I'll show you the rest of our rabbits. This is Luke. Luke is a blue standard Rex buck. Um, he's been here for um, maybe six months, so he's fairly new here. He's eating his pellets. He just got some nice water. Luke has a pretty fancy schmancy hutch in here full of lots of straw. Don't you, Luke? This is Missy. Missy is our Flemish giant doe. She's about two years old. She'll be going on three years this year. She's given us a lot of litters. Really great mom. Best mom we've ever had. You can see Missy is pretty big. She's probably about 16 pounds or so. Maybe even a little bit bigger now that she's older. She's very sweet. This is Esther. <clears throat> Esther is our um, broken black standard Rex doe. She'll be going on her second year here soon. <clears throat> Esther is also a good mom. She just takes, she seems to take more than a few breedings to be bred. Um, where Missy seems to take right away. Esther is a mean and hateful thing. She, of no fault of her own, she came to us that way. We didn't raise her from a baby, but you can see she's very beautiful. I call her my little moo cow. Because she looks like a little dairy cow. Great mom, Esther, will probably top out at almost 9 pounds this year. This is Old Blue. <clears throat> Old Blue! Let me see if I can get it a little bit better. Old Blue is a Blue Otter Standard Rex buck. You can see he's got a little floppy ear here because he gets ear infections sometimes. But Old Blue is our best <coughs> and brightest buck. He is about eight and a half pounds. He is going on his third year as well. The difference between Old Blue and Luke is that <coughs> Old Blue is an otter, a blue otter buck. Luke is just a blue buck. And the difference is that Old Blue has... Um, like a brownish tint you can see around his eyes and under his chin and around his ears and then Old Blue also has a band around the bottom of his belly 
underneath that is also a tannish color. Old Blue! <clears throat> Old Blue is everyone's favorite. He's so soft and so sweet. He loves to be snuggled. Old Blue did come to us that way. He was treated very good. And his family loved him very much when we got him. And he has been a really great breeder here for us. Haven't you, Old Blue? Many of our meat rabbits you'll see have ear tattoos. I'm not sure if you can see or not. The blue is H or RB1. <clears throat> this is common in rabbits. Um, not necessarily homestead rabbits, but it is common when you get into show rabbits and when you're trying to keep track of your breedings. Now, we don't actually do a lot of tattoos here unless somebody asks for it. We do have a tattoo machine. Um, they make very nice pen machines now, which are very humane. Um, it almost feels like just a little pin prick to them. Um, so we do if someone wants it, but otherwise we don't tattoo unless we plan on showing in which it is a requirement. Now, we do um, breed for show quality to help offset cost here. So if somebody's buying a show rabbit, we do have to tattoo them, or if we decide to show them ourselves, we have to have them tattooed here. So we have lots of cute rabbits, as you can tell. Uh, Missy, I wanted to show you because she is a Flemish giant. She's the only Flemish giant that we have here. Um, and she makes great meat rabbits because we combine the Rex breed and the Flemish giant breed. Because they ha they've been our best breeders because they grow quickly and with more meat. If you were to do just a Flemish giant, the Flemish giant grows big, but it grows bone first instead of muscle first. And so you would just be getting a bony rabbit at 8 to 12 weeks old which you don't want. So combining the Rex gene and the Flemish Giant gene, you get a large rabbit that's more meatier. So let's go over, um, I'm just going to go over a few quick things with you, including breeds. Some of the breeds we'll go over too. Um, so how did we get started in meat rabbits? And that's a, a, that's a funny story. <laughs> I actually didn't want meat rabbits. My husband wanted meat rabbits. And I said, well, we'll get them, but you're going to take care of them and you're going to breed them. And um, it didn't happen. Two months into this, they still hadn't been bred and we had rabbits sitting here waiting to be bred. We started out, because we were uneducated, we started out with two Flemish giant girls, um, which Missy was one of them. And if you could see the chickens behind you, you'd be laughing too. Um, and then we started out with this little tiny buck. And so females are called does, males are called bucks. Get back in there. So I'm going to close this. We started out with two does, one buck. And because we took the cheap route of doing getting a buck from a farm like um you know those chicken swaps you go to they hold them at tractor supply parking lots and stuff we made the mistake of going to one of those and getting a buck and it just didn't turn out very well he was not what they said he was lots of air room for air at those places so our first litter was extremely small I bred them, they, they turned out great, but we ended up selling most of them as breeding stock. So they ended up dressing out around two pounds because our buck that we had was actually a dwarf rabbit. And imagine a dwarf rabbit mating with a 16 pound Flemish giant. And while the babies came out, you know, semi big, they were not big enough for our needs. So let's go over the breeds that you should be thinking about if you're getting into meat rabbits. <clears throat> um, the I would say the four main breeds are going to be New Zealand, Rex, Silver Fox, and then Flemish Giant only if you are breeding it with either a Rex, a New Zealand, or a um, Silver Fox. 
Uh, silver fox and rex are heritage breeds, and what that means is they are an old breed. They've been bred generation throughout generation throughout generation. So, of course, we love to stay with heritage breeds here, and we went with the rex because they are so, there's not very many rex in Virginia. And we actually spent, gosh, I spent at least six to eight months trying to find my rex breeding stock, and quality when you are looking for rabbits I cannot stress to you that quality is so important I know even if you're not showing them it is still important with meat rabbits because if you're getting a sick rabbit or a scrawny rabbit your breeding stock for generations to come it's not going to be very good and you want good stock good healthy stock from people that you can trust and so it took us that long to find good meaty hardy rats rabbits because there were none in Virginia so our rabbits came from Maryland Pennsylvania Ohio and then uh, one of them came from southern Virginia and I swear um, I was about to give up and then some of these rabbits just kind of fell into my lap thankfully I was able to find transport for these rabbits if you're looking for good stock, I suggest going with a good breeder, and if they're in a different state, try finding a transport for them. Um, a lot of these rabbit shows that people go to, they offer transport, and even if it's three different people, um, you know, 20 bucks isn't bad for, for paying for a transport to get that rabbit back to you so that you don't actually have to go and drive yourself. So those are the four, I would say, main breeds, New Zealand Rex Silver Fox, which is very popular. Um, and then the Flemish Giant, if you're mating the Flemish Giant with another breed that's stockier. Now, our Flemish Giant Rex kits sell out quickly, 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 quickly. I can't even keep them to eat myself. Um, and the reason for that is a lot of people are currently into the Giant Rex um, genetics, where people are trying to make a giant version of the Rex Rabbit, which is what they are. And they're doing that because the Rex Rabbit has really plush fur. Um, a, a good quality Rex Rabbit should have very plush, velvety-like fur. Um, and if you want a larger version of that, that would require bringing in genetics if you can't find it, which isn't really something people like to do if you're trying to breed for show, but Basically what would happen is if you're trying to breed in a larger kit for genetics, then you're going to have to put in a larger rabbit. So when you make the Flemish Giant back to the Rex, you get kits, but they have long hair. Rex fur is a three generation fur. That means that Flemish Giant's kits would have to be made back to a Rex. You would get 50% Rex fur in that litter. Those babies would have to be mated back to a Rex and then you would get 100% fur rex fur in that litter so people are really hardcore into rabbits and breeding so you don't have to be if you're just doing it for me but if you start getting into the show and the really taking pride in your breeding stock then be aware that those are things that you might consider in the future so the next is housing um housing we like i said we do these big hutches because we live down a really steep mountainside or big steep hill basically and I can't put my rabbits on pasture because of all the water runoff that comes down our hill. So I'll show you a few pictures. These are our rabbit hutches, and so basically we have one side that has a door, and the other side is the same, but it's not a door, it's just wire. They have wire flooring so that their feces can drop through the bottom. My chickens then go under, and my chickens pull all that out. Um, in the winter time, we put straw in, and that straw comes out into a wheelbarrow and goes into our garden beds. Rabbit fertilizer is the best fertilizer that you can have. Highly suggest putting it in your garden beds. The other option is um, a ground hutch where you can actually make like a, a chicken run um, but with a wire bottom so that the rabbits cannot burrow 
and you move that hutch every single day, especially in the summertime so that those rabbits are on pasture only, you can supplement with feed. The next is um, a colony setting. You could do like a chicken run um, <clears throat> with sides where they can't get out and a deep litter method bedding. And what happens then is you have to have buckets and stuff all over the place for them to hide and, and nest it. And this is where you put all of your rabbits together. Technically, it could get tricky. It, it can work, but it can get tricky. But we only have one rabbit in each hutch. Um, males can fight. We have had males fight, and it's not pretty. Um, and then females can fight, too, if they're pregnant or get territorial. So, um, if you want the colony setting, which can be easier because there's not so much to keep up with, I highly suggest you research it first because you do need a lot of room to tend to these rabbits and you're never going to know when you're expecting a litter, so you'll have to catch, you know, the does and check them constantly. So those are your three housing options. Feed. You can do a pellet diet, a raw diet, a pasture diet, or combined. So if you're planning on doing a raw diet and... Your rabbits are in hutches like ours. Your rabbit needs at least a quart of raw vegetables, raw food, every day. Two carrots are not going to feed your rabbit a day. In fact, a lot of rabbits, it's a misconception, they don't even like carrots. Um, a lot of rabbits prefer um, deep, dark, leafy greens, so you don't give that a lot. And then parsnips and papaya and things like that. Um, they need each rabbit, one rabbit needs at least a quart of food per day. Um, a rabbit's main diet, if we're being honest, should just strictly be hay or grass. If they're not on pasture, then hay, good quality hay, is necessary. Um, give them, you know, two sizes what they are in hay a day and they'll be fine. Um, we do feed pellets because they are meat rabbits. If you give more protein, you'll get more protein out of your rabbit when you process. So there are non-GMO and organic options that you can get. Um, I highly suggest the countryside um, or the new country, I think it's called Organics Feed. That's a great feed. Um, there's also non-GMO feeds at your local co-ops and state farms and stuff like that. Or again, you can do the pasture, which they're gonna need supplemental feed in the winter time because your grass isn't growing in the winter. So hay is your main source. You can do raw, you can do a combination. If you're gonna do strictly raw, then you need to give them at least a quart of food of raw food per day. Or you have pellets, or you have pasture if you're putting them on pasture. Next is processing. That's always a tricky subject. Um, whenever someone asks what we do with our rabbits, I'm kind of like, I don't know how you're gonna take this, but we eat them. <laughs> um, we get mixed, mixed reviews on that, but anyhow. So, processing. There is many. There are many proper ways to process, and there are many improper ways to process. And what it all boils down to is how to humanely kill your rabbits. I have been on YouTube, and I've seen lots of different methods. And I understand that certain methods work for certain people, but I am all about humanely processing. If you're going to humanely process a rabbit, I would suggest either shooting it, with a high-powered air rifle directly into the head, it kills them instantly. Or, I would suggest using the ringer method or the broomstick method. We either use a high-powered rifle or we use the broomstick method because it's easier for me. I don't need help, I can do it all on my own, they're dead instantly. Instantly. I do not suggest using the whack em over the head method. I cannot tell you how many people I've seen do that and the rabbit not die instantly. Um, if you are not good at aiming, you're going to strictly just hurt the rabbit or knock them unconscious and then by the time you are cutting the head off, they're still alive. Don't, please don't, please don't do that. Um, you can do it if you've practiced and you feel comfortable with it, then yes, go ahead and do it. I don't suggest doing it if you're getting started. I don't suggest doing it at all. I would suggest doing the broomstick, the ringer, or the high-powered air rifle. Um, simply because there's not a lot of room for error in those methods. And why leave room for error if you don't have to? So those are my three humane ways of how to process a rabbit. Now, skinning a rabbit is different. Very easy. Um, I'm hoping to do a video for you this spring when we have some more rabbits to process, but as I said, we're downsizing. 
So the reason we're downsizing is because um, we have so much meat. We, we bought a, a pig share. We are avid hunters, so, or my husband is. We have tons of venison, um, and we just don't need it. We're getting quail uh, because I feel like quail will be easier for me to do, and we prefer bird meat over the rabbit meat. Now, rabbit meat does taste a lot like chicken. It's just a little bit more gamey, which is fine. Um, whenever you're doing wild game, always try to enhance the flavor, not get rid of the flavor. It's when you try to get rid of the flavor that you start getting icky tastes. So try to enhance the flavor, not not cover up the flavor. Um, processing, I can't really go into too much of that. Obviously, that deserves a video, but I, I do cannot stress enough. The three humane ways to do it without error is the high-powered rifle, the ringer method, which you can buy a, a rabbit ringer and pull their neck, or the broomstick method, which is essentially the same thing. Look all those up on YouTube. They all have videos. Um, if you're first getting started, don't I don't suggest the whacking them over the head method. Just That even just sounds mean. Um, pelts is the last thing I wanted to talk to you about. A lot of people ask, what do you do with your pelts, which is the rabbit fur? How do you sell it? How do you tan it? Um, my, You can actually save the pelts if you're not ready to tan them. So when you pull the pelt off of the rabbit, make sure the skin side is out and you roll it up and put it in a bag and you can stick it in your freezer. Now mine have lasted up to six months. They can probably last longer than that. When you're ready to tan them, you take them out and then you put in them in your solution. A lot of people do an alum solution, which is natural. Um, and then some people do, you know, the, the brain method too, where you boil the brain, and but we don't do that. Um, but again, you can look that up if you're interested in that. So a lot of people do the alum solution. Um, so you can keep it up to six months in your freezer until you're ready for it. And then there's lots of YouTube videos. I don't have one. I don't plan on making one anytime soon about tanning them. Now, you cannot sell the hides until they're tanned, most, most of the time. So you'll need to learn how to tan if you want to sell your hides. A lot of people keep them. They, they make slippers out of them. They make hats, scarves, big blankets. I have, I have homestead friends who have Rex rabbits because Rex fur is so highly sought after, um, especially if it's white. Um, but they have these huge blankets that they've made, and I envy them because I so want one. But if you have allergies, it's probably not a good idea. But if you want to sell them, you can always hook up with a local crafter, or there are a lot of people on Facebook on these meat rabbit groups, and you can also find them on the internet who are looking for quality fur. So if you've already tanned it, which you should before you try to sell it, then you can see, search out these people on the internet, and they're there, you just have to search for them a little bit. And, uh, you know, Rex, I've seen Rex for bring in $20 a pelt. I've seen it bring in as low as $3 a pelt. Just depends on the quality. So that's another thing. If you're looking for breeding stock, get good quality fur. Know what you're buying. Cannot stress quality, 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 quality in your rabbits. Both their, um, their shape and their size. Uh, make sure they have a good round back, not a flat back. Make sure they don't have ear mites. Make sure they're not sniffling or sneezing. That's a big no-no. Don't add that into your herd. You'll kill all your rabbits. Um, make sure their feet don't have sores on them. Make sure their nails are clipped. Make sure their fur isn't matted. Make sure it's very smooth and lays great. And I think that's it for now for the basics. Listen, we've had rabbits for years. If someone tells you they know everything about rabbits, they're lying. <laughs> Um, rabbits don't breed like rabbits. We haven't talked about rabbit breeding, but that's a whole different story. I do have that on our website. You can look that up and read it. Um, rabbits take time. They take time. They take energy. You don't just stick a rabbit in there. They breed and you have babies. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, going back to the feed, we do give them other supplemental feeds. So, like, you can do black little sunflower seeds. You can do to go along with your, you know, seeds and stuff are great for your rabbits to go along with your feed. And making sure your rabbits are healthy and able to give you what you need only if you give them what they need. Rabbits are fairly easy, but they're not the easiest livestock to tend to. They take time, they take, um, you have to invest into them, and 
it's not just about getting a rabbit and breeding it. It's about really investing the time into researching what breeds you want and to spending time with those animals so that you know what their temperament is, especially if you're trying to sell for show or pet. And it's also about figuring out what you want your genetic breeding line to be. Here we breed for size, for meat size, and for show quality. Those two things allow us to get profit and make money that we've spent. I have spent three or four hundred dollars on these rabbits, okay? Probably more than that, if we're just being honest. I need to get that money back. And how I get that money back is by selling these kits for $75 to $85. I can do that only because they are show quality. <clears throat> now, not all of them are show quality. Some of them have disqualifications. If you are going to label those rabbits as show quality, you need to know what show quality is. Do Because somebody's going to call you out on it, and I would be the first one to do it. Please do not label your rabbits as show quality if you have no idea what show quality rabbits are. Um, please do not label your rabbits as quality rabbits if you don't know what quality is. Um, fur is a big deal, form is a big deal. Those two are main things. And then you get into coloring when it comes to show. Is the coloring good? Um, if it's a broken color, which is what Esther is, uh, she has to have a little mask on her, on her face. Does she have that? If she doesn't, she's disqualified from showing. So do your research. I hope these basics help you at least get started. Rabbits are a fantastic breed. Um, for your homestead. We are simply downsizing because we don't need all the meat. Um, I wanted to give you a few resources. They're going to be down in the links. A few books um, for natural rabbit raising that I'm going to give you. I really suggest Beyond the Pellet from Boy Craven Jr. He's um, one of the leaders in the Backyard Meat Rabbits group on Facebook. Highly suggest you join that group. It is a great group. Those people are going to help you. They've helped me tremendously throughout the years. And I think that's it for me for now. I will post individual videos throughout the next few weeks. One on breeding, one on holistic care, one strictly on feed, one strictly on housing. So those will help you throughout the, the, the journey that you're on. If you have any questions, please ask them below and I will do a question and answer video um, probably next week. So ask them below and I will get back to you. Thanks. Mm -hmm.